the job of the scribe in ancient Egypt and in ancient Mesopotamia was a very elevated one. Uh, it may not have been a very well-paying one. There are some very charming anecdotes in the ancient texts, complaints by scribes that they aren't making enough money. Well, this is something that one hears in the modern world about scribes and teachers. But the job had with it great prestige. And in a wonderful Sumerian account of a dialogue between a father and a son, the father, who's a scribe, tells his son not to chase money. The son, it turns out, has become wealthy through business, but to become a scribe, to carry on the traditions of the scribal family. Now, this prestige about the scribe is related to the preparation for the job. In a way, we might compare it to medicine in the modern world and to the number of years one has to study to become a physician. In ancient Egypt and ancient Mesopotamia, it could take up to 10 years to learn to become a master of the scribal arts. These were very difficult languages, and they required a high degree of diligence to master them. They were academies that taught to them. One would apprentice oneself to another scribe to learn, and often, as I indicated in the story of the father and the son, the scribal arts would be passed down. And where does the scribal art originate? It originates with the gods, not only in an abstract way, but in a concrete way. That is, the god Thoth in ancient Egypt actually has a set of scribal implements that he uses to write. The god Enki not only brings the idea of writing, he brings the technology of writing. Because writing, which was done in Mesopotamia with a stylus, on clay was a technological pursuit. It was done on tablets of clay, which had to be baked in the sun or in kilns, and then these were preserved. In fact, it was so technological that, that there were some things that the scribes and the um, people in the scribal academies did that mystified students of the ancient Near East for a long time. One of the most charming problems was making envelopes. Many of you may have seen in museums the small Mesopotamian tablets on which the cuneiform writing appeared with the wedge-shaped writing. Sometimes when a royal letter was being delivered, the scribes, after writing the letter on the clay, would take another set of clay, another set of materials, and shape an envelope of clay around the letter. This was to ensure privacy. So in order to get to the letter, you had to break the envelope. Actually, you couldn't steam it open. So it's a better system of security than we have today. I recall as a graduate student reading that uh, some modern scholars were mystified by how they made these envelopes without getting the envelope to stick to the letter. And uh, I was heartened to read a few years ago, as often happens in the history of science, that someone was brave enough to start investigation into this problem on their own and not rely what was written in the books. And they actually tried to do it and they found that it worked pretty naturally. If you baked the one on the bottom, the letter tablet first, and then put the clay around it and left some space, you could create an envelope. It wasn't some high-tech idea. So this is a vote for going back and doing the experiment. My point, the scribal arts were an elevated art. And they were the gift of the gods. In this lecture, we have outlined the beginnings of ancient Near Eastern civilization, and thus of all civilization, and looked at the culture of the Egyptians and the Sumerians. We compared their respective geography, irrigation systems, building materials, and vulnerability to invasion and conquest. We moved to a survey of the Mesopotamian city-states and focused on the Sumerian idea of an organized society. And we focused, as we will throughout this series, on the idea that writing and the scribal arts enable 
the emergence of civilization. To be a scribe in these ancient cultures was a job of great prestige and one well rewarded, not financially, but in terms of social status and status within the nobility. 